Hello guys and welcome to our new video. Today we are here in the middle of the Czech Republic next to the Kasper Castle. In this video we would like to show you our photogrammetry 3D scanning workflow. This video is not gonna be any kind of tutorial as we won't be describing all the steps we will take but I hope it's gonna be helpful and maybe it helps someone to better understand what is photogrammetry and what it takes and needs. Now let's jump ahead and take a look at the final work. This is the final 3D model we are going to create. Upload it to the CrossCloud with some panoramic 360 images, so your users can come inside and look around, and with some contextual information points. You can share such a scene with a plain link or embed it to your own pages. So let's take a look at all the devices. As I mentioned, we will use DJI Mini 3 Pro in a combination with the DJI Mavic 2 Pro. For the terrestrial images, we will use Fujifilm X-H2. And we will also take 360 images. They will be coming from the Ricoh Z1 camera. These images won't be used for the photogrammetry and generation of the 3D model but we will use them at our final 3D presentation at CrossCloud. We are at the site and as the very first step we will perform an automatic flight with the Mavic 2. We will use MapPilot application where we have a saved mission we created at home. Let's take a look and check the settings. Here you can see the area the drone will cover. Height will be 70 meters. Maybe it sounds a bit high, but there is a problem with the two tall towers the castle have, and as we really don't want to hit them, we need to fly relatively high. Overlap is set to 90% along the track, as well as across the track. Total fly time will be 83 minutes, so it will require 4 to 5 batteries. Let's do the drone dance to calibrate the sensors on Mavic 2 and jump in the air. When the Mavic 2 is in the air on its automatic mission, we will start also with the Mini 3. With the Mini 3 we will perform manual flight to capture details and to get images from the lower height. To be able to align images from the ground with the, let's say, upper images from the Mavic 2. So it's gonna be kinda middle layer. Maybe it's a bit confusing now, but I will show you later when we will have aligned images in reality capture. Okay, after an hour we have finished all the flights. Mavic 2 automatic flight captured 1100 pictures and wasted 5 batteries. The Mini took 400 images with 3 batteries. As the next step after the aerial images, we will take terrestrial images with our Fuji DSLR. The purpose of these images is to give more details to our model and to capture the castle not just from the air, but also from the ground. So we will have much better reconstruct shapes that are not visible from the air, like overhangs and so on. We will basically go around the castle and take many images from the different angles. No magic here. We are using 24mm lens, you don't want to capture details with some longer lens. At the end we took 200 images with the Fuji. Now we have everything we need for the 3D reconstruction, but as we are going to create a rich 3D presentation of this beautiful castle, we will also need panoramic images. So users will be able to not see only the exterior appearance, but also, they will be able to step in and look around in its interiors. We are using Ricoh Z1 for this, so we will pick some interesting places and take a few shots. The reason why I am squatting like this is that in post-process it's fast and easy to retouch myself when I am just on the camera like this, and I want the camera to be in the height of an average human eyes. And that's it for the on-site work, now let's go home to process all the images. So we have downloaded all the captured images from all the devices, it is from both drones and from the Fuji DSLR into one folder. 
Now we are in Reality Capture, where we will generate the 3D model from the images. As the first step, we need to align the images, where the software tries to estimate their positions. Let's click on Add Folder, where we will select the folder with our pictures and click Align Images. Aligning has finished and we've got two main components. Component number one contains most of the images, while the component number two contains images we took from the ground with the Fuji camera. Why do we have two components? Because at this place there is no, not enough overlap between the images from the Fuji and other images we took with the drones. For the, for the photogrammetry it's crucial to have enough overlap between the images. So here we did it wrong. We should have fly lower with the drone at this place and took more images along this road to ensure enough overlap between the Fuji and the drone images. But it's not a big deal at this place. Another option how to fix this issue is by using manual control points, but it would not be precise and as it's not a big deal at this case, we keep it as it is. At other places where we took images by the Fuji, they align properly, like at this courtyard for example. The next step is to build the mesh model. Be aware that this step is time consuming. On our computer it's gonna take more than 12 hours, I guess. So we usually do it overnight. The 3D model reconstruction has finished and we have end up with the model that has 445 million triangles. That's a pretty crazy number. As you can see, even our 3D view doesn't display the actual mesh, but only the point cloud. So as the very first step, we will decimate our model to 20 million triangles to be able to handle the model much better. We will use the simplification tool, put here the 20 millions and click simplify. The simplification has completed and we have now also model number 2 with only 20 million triangles. Now we can also switch the 3D view to the solid mode so we will see our actual 3D mesh, not just the point cloud. The next step is optional but what I like to do is to cut off our central part, our castle, with just a little surrounding and to delete the other parts. It's pretty easy in reality capture, we will switch our view to the top orthographic view, do not have our view distorted. We will use the lasso tool and we will simply select the area we want to preserve, like this. In the next step we need to invert the selection because what we have just selected it's gonna be actually cut it off. So we, as we want to cut off the, the other parts we need to switch it, we need to invert the selection and now we can use the filter selection to filter out the selected areas. Voila, now we have only our castle with just a little surrounding. But as you can see, we left these big triangles at the bottom of the 3D mesh. So in the next step we will filter them too. The flow will be the same, we will use the lasso tool, we will select these large ugly triangles and we use the filter selection tool. Ok, now we have just our castle. In the next step we will filter off also the non-connected parts. What does it mean? You will see it when I use the advanced selection tool and I will select the, select the largest connected component tool. And as you can see, these white, white parts 
are not connected to the main part. Usually it's just the noise you know, created during the photogrammetry reconstruction process and they are not really pretty at our model. So there is a very, very simple function to select them and to filter them out, to actually delete them from our model. So again, I will use the invert function because we actually want to delete this selected things and again filter selection. And now our model is much cleaner, much better looking. So we are ready for texturing. As the very first step in reality capture, we need to create UV maps for our textures. UV maps are maybe a little bit advanced topic, but we will take it simple. There is an unwrap tool in reality capture and it there you can define, you know, the text the resolution of the textures. As we are going to post our model on the web on CrossCloud, we will use 4K textures at the count of 2 and hit unwrap. This is a fast step, so we are ready to go. And now we can finally texture our model. So we will hit the texture button. And after a few minutes, our model is textured. That's all in reality capture. So now we are going to export our model. So we will go to tools and export mesh and point cloud option. Here we will define the file name of our 3D model. It's very important to choose the correct file type. And as we are going to import our photogrammetry 3D model into CrossCloud, we need to choose the GLB file type. Click save. And this dialog is very important. Here we need to choose export textures to yes and also embedded textures set to yes. It's quite a good idea to set export vertex normals to no as we are not going to use normals as CrossCloud uses unlit, unlit render. And click OK. And now as the final step, let's our photogrammetry 3D scan share with the rest of the world. Let's open the cross cloud, go to the my board. I have created a special folder for this, for this scene. And let's choose the file we previously exported from the reality capture. Here we can set a title and down there we can set a default camera. We can also set up details of the camera like like dolly constraints, polar constraints and so on, camera field of view, but we will do it later in the editor. Right now we will just save the model. Cool, model has been saved and now we can go to the editor and fine tune our 3D scene. Let's go to the background and choose some cool background for our 3D model. In the camera dialog, we will set just the button constraint so user won't be able to, to move the camera under the castle. We will also set the max, max dolly constraint so user won't be able to kind of unzoom far away. And now let's add two points of interest. The first one will be just the contextual information point like the for the main gate for example we will just uh, change the icon size and style we will also move the point of interest a little bit up and at this place let's put a panoramic image so user will be able to kind of step into the scene and look around at the 360 image. Let's just drag and drop the image into the dialog. Let's change the title of the scene to main courtyard. We could also change the camera field of view and or define the polar constraints, but let's keep it as it is and just change the icon, icon style. 
and again we will just move the point a little bit up okay that's it i won't be adding any any other points of interest if you take a look at our scene the link is below this video you can try this 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 photogrammetry 3d scene at your own explore the castle you can visit different 360 images there is much more points of interest than i'm showing in this video but really i just wanted to make this video short at the share menu we can find URL of our scene so we can share it with just a plain link or you can find there also iframe tag so you can embed your photogrammetry 3d scan into your own web page that's it for this video thanks a lot for watching do not forget to visit our Kashberg 3d scene the link is under the video if you want to take a look at our other 3D presentations, there is also a link to our cross-cloud folder with our other photogrammetry-based 3D scenes. Happy scanning!